Well, we've got some after Jan's tour, so we can go up and up to the next one. Yes, I don't like Oh, right, yes. Right. Yes. Today, did we,
Good morning everybody, nice to see you, welcome to our service and if you're watching online you are also welcome and we trust you will feel part of the service this morning. Uh, I'm going to do the notices first to get them out of the way. There's going to be no 11 o'clock service next Sunday, there's a half past nine here in the extension as usual, no 11 o'clock service but everybody is invited to uh, the URC in the precinct because they have a visitor from leprosy mission and as we support the leprosy mission they thought it would be nice to uh, join together so do feel that at half past ten you are very welcome there to join with them next Sunday. Uh, two notices of social events for your summer diary uh, on August the 7th there's the ecumenical walk, and this time there's a picnic as well, all being well. Uh, picnic at one o'clock, walk at two o'clock, meeting in Itchin Valley Car Park, Country Park. So uh, there's more details of that on the bulletin. And on the 21st of August, there's the church barbecue, uh, 12 o'clock in Royal Victoria Country Park in Netley. Uh, food supplied, adults five pounds, children a pound, uh, and you can talk to Joy in the office, book your slot, book your, book your lunch. Uh, so that's August the 21st. Two, two things to put in your diary for the summer. And I'll just to say that um, Omega Cafe on Wednesdays will carry on through the summer too. So if you come to that or would like to begin to come, now's your chance. Those are my notices, except just to say that uh, a number of people are down with COVID. Our violinist is not here, as you can see. Andy's got COVID and Jill has got COVID, one of the singers and a couple of the congregation. And uh, the, the sort of resident vicar down here who's doing the presiding at communion, he's got a bad back. So all in all, we're lucky to have a service this morning. I'm okay so far, so there we are. We'll try and hang together. Well, we're going to start with a wonderful hymn. We're going to sing, Christ is made the sure foundation. We're going to think about Jesus as the foundation of our faith. So will you stand and sing loudly?
Please sit down. That sounded good singing to me. Well done. I, I did forget to say that, uh, welcome Graham back. Graham's recovering from an op and I'm jolly glad he can play this morning or I should be running back and forth. I'm glad to have you back, Graham. So we turn to our service books and just take a moment of quiet to focus your thoughts, focus your hearts this morning. The Lord be with you. And we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to make a confession, take a moment to think of, is there anything that you wish to tell the Lord about this morning? Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. So we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we have another chance to sing. So keep up the good work. We're going to stand, if you are able, and sing Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. Please sit down. And Nikki and then Sue are going to give us our readings this morning. This reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, beginning at, at verse 15. 
the supremacy of the Son of God. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is the word of the Lord. As you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It's John chapter 4, beginning at verse 21. Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Here, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. to you, O Christ. Please sit down. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we think about truth this morning, help us to hear your word to us. Help us to be open to what you have to say to us. Amen. There's only been one occasion when I've been in a court of law. I wasn't in the dock, don't worry. I wondered if you have ever been in a, in a courtroom. Hopefully not in the dock either. Maybe you've done jury service. I haven't, I've never been called to do jury service. Or maybe there's a case that you followed and you've actually gone to court to witness it. Our daughter Rhiannon had to give evidence in a magistrate's court because she was a younger teenager, she had to have an adult with her and I went with her and that was my only experience of being in a court of law. And uh, court dramas have always been good subjects, haven't they, for plays and for TV and films. Witnesses are called and they have to swear that they will tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And of course, to lie under oath is a punishable offence. So what do people swear by when they take that oath? Traditionally, it's been a copy of scripture. They take it in their hand and are told to say those words. But why? I think it's because the Bible underlines the fact 
that the truth is expected of them and the oath they are taking is serious. So what do we really think that this, this book contains? What is it? Well, you probably tell me, well, it's got letters and it's got history and it's got visions and prophecy and songs and good advice. It was written over several hundred years. Christians are expected to accept it as God's word. Human beings wrote it down, but God inspired the writers by his Holy Spirit. We were singing about the Holy Spirit just then. So this book is truth. It's truth about God, about us, and about God de uh, God's dealings with us and the world. However, in Paul's second letter to Timothy, he says this, the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, good solid teaching, but they'll accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires. Over 2,000 years on, Paul was right, wasn't he? It's still the same. People don't want to listen, not always. People are happy to find something which suits them. In school, I had to study a play called Right You Are If You Think So by Pirandello. And I think that sums up a lot of modern thinking. If I think it's right, then it's right for me. But Paul goes on to write to Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, correction, and training in righteousness. That's quite a different attitude. Well, this morning we're thinking about our worship in truth, worshiping in truth. And here, as we've just said, this is written truth on which we can base not only our worship, but our lives. Sue read to us just a little bit of the story of Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well. And the Samaritans were looked down upon by the people in Jerusalem, the Jews. They thought they were only not quite Jewish, really. And the Samaritans had their own center of worship as opposed to the temple in Jerusalem. And the woman was trying to tell Jesus that, well, you know, we Samaritans, we have, we have our own center and that's fine by us. And Jesus turns to him and says, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Doesn't matter if it was Jerusalem or Samaria or here or there. True worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's partly why I think we recite the creed in our services. We're about to do that next. Creed is from the Latin word credo, I believe. And that's what we say, I believe in. This is our faith. This is the doctrine of the church. And it's there to remind us of where we stand. I think businesses and schools have sort of statements of their intent, don't they? they? They have to think of a statement that encapsulates what they're trying to do in the school or in the business. And if you like, the creed is, contributes to our statement as a church. This is where we stand. This is our foundation in words. I expect you watched the news last week uh, and saw the terrible pictures, films of the houses on fire, caught up in the grass fires that spread so quickly. And the people there, poor people, lost everything they had very quickly. Terrible circumstances, really. And they either got out with what they were standing in or managed to grab something on the way. I wonder what you would take, have a think as I'm speaking, what would you grab on the way out if you were in a rush? Lots of people say, oh, the photos, because you can't get those back. 
but nowadays you probably grab your phone if you've got one because well my daughter has hundreds of photos on her phone she doesn't need a, a photo album so perhaps you grab your phone as your most valuable possession or ladies you might go for your handbag because it's got your purse and your cards and your comb and goodness knows what in it so what do we think is our most valuable possession think about it what would you least want to lose in life if you had to think about hard about it very hard to choose isn't it amongst all the things that we have and treasure and that's just the word that Paul uses to Timothy. I'm back in that second letter again. Paul reminds Timothy because he was a leader and a teacher in the church. He says to him, hold to the standard of sound teaching. Remember what it is, Timothy, that you've learnt and guard the good treasure entrusted to you, the treasure of the gospel. Well, I wonder if this book, there it is, I wonder if this book is a treasure to you. How, how do you value it in your life? Do you keep one? Do you read it? Do I read it? Are we all getting to know it a bit better? Paul said, hold to sound teaching. Remember, this is truth. This is what you need to know. And I'm quite sure that none of the other people who stand up here and speak to you would mind me saying that we shouldn't take it for granted what we hear. We shouldn't necessarily take every word that we hear from the pulpit or on the internet or from television if you're watching a service. I think it's important that we all know where we stand, know what our creed is, and we think about what people are saying to us. I hope you're thinking about what I'm saying to you as I'm talking to you. Just because I'm up here, well, think about what I'm saying. It's a challenge to us, isn't it? Truth matters. Well, I've been quoting a lot from Paul, <coughs> writing to Timothy, but those weren't the readings we had. So let's think about those. What are we talking about here? What are we actually worshipping if we're asked to worship in truth? Are we worshipping a book of words? Do we recite our way through the service every Sunday? I won't say as a ritual, because I'm sure you think more about it than that, but at least as a routine, as a formula, do we feel at the end, yes, we've kept to the words, we've said what we need to say, there we are, we've done that bit. I think we need to push the word truth a little bit further. You know, I like Professor Brian Cox. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He does the programs on the TV about the universe and the stars and everything. He's totally sold, isn't he, on discovering all he can about the universe, how it works, where it started, how it came to be as it is. He's so enthusiastic. I think he catches you and sort of takes you along with him. And he sees just how mind-blowing the universe actually is. If you listen to him, I, well, I, I find it very difficult to take it in, the extent of everything. But there's something I would like to say to Mr. Cox if ever I met him. Professor Brian Cox, I would say, you are so nearly there. I think you've realised you're looking for what's behind the universe. You're even close to saying there's someone out there who's behind it all. If you listen to him, he sees patterns and things like that. He's so anxious to know what it's all about. So 
Brian Cox, just take a little step further. Don't think about what's behind it, but who is behind it? Listen to this. In, G in him, Jesus, we, we read it earlier. In him, Jesus, all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created for him and through him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Or words at the beginning of Hebrews. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. If only Brian Cox and other people could grasp that and accept it, what would he make of the universe then? I think he'd be even more excited by what he could see. I need to push truth just a little bit further again. Jesus wasn't reticent about who he was, was he? To begin with, he kept a very quiet, low-level ministry. But it came out, and he had to admit who he was. Do you remember he stood before Pilate, that rather rough-and-ready Roman governor? And Pilate was questioning him. And he says this to Pilate. I came into the world to testify to the truth. Pilate, of course, says, oh, what is truth? And those words have come down, haven't they, through history. What is truth? One of the biggest questions people ask. Well, Jesus could answer that question. And whether we ask it cynically or whether we ask it genuinely, here's his answer. He says, I am the truth. Just think about that. I am the truth. And he goes on, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's part of that. But stop with, I am the truth. Not just a truthful person. I am the truth about everything. That is a stunning claim for anybody to make. There are lots of leaders in the world. I challenge any of them to say, I am the truth. Let it sink in this morning. We have the truth in our heads, don't we? We recite it in the creed, we read it in scripture, written down for us. So we have, when we're worshipping, we're thinking about worshipping in truth, we have the truth in our heads, in the words that we say to help us understand. But as we've said, we don't worship the words. We don't worship the Bible in that sense. We don't worship a ritual. What do we worship? We worship a person. So when we're worshipping, we also have the truth in our hearts, in our response to Jesus and who he is. We worship the image of the invisible God. We worship the firstborn of all creation. We worship the head of the church. Earlier on in the service, we said these words, or, or I read them to you, but they're in, you read them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's all part of worshipping in truth. Who do we worship? We worship Jesus when we're here. We can do this trusting, not just in a book, but in a person who's embodies, who's the living embodiment, if you like, of the whole thing. So worshipping in truth, head and heart together this morning. I'm going to read the last verses of the reading in Colossians again and finish with that. 
You who were once estranged and hostile in mind, he's now reconciled in his body through death to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we worship this morning, help us to take our stand on the truth in your word. Help us to treasure it, know it, love it, use it. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth as the embodiment of all the things that are written. Amen. And now we're going to sing again. Thank you, musicians. And as a, a response, you can make it your response in whatever way you wish. We're going to sing, I will offer up my life. Please stand as you can and we'll sing. As we stand or sit, please turn back to your service books and we're going to say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit down and Peter is going to lead us in prayer. We come to pray to God the Father, through Jesus the Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We also pray with our brothers and sisters worldwide and we remember that the church is everlasting. So I share, we share a prayer that was written some 1600 years ago. God beyond all speech, above all thought and surpassing all imagination. When you speak, may we listen. When you draw near, may we rejoice in your presence. When you reveal yourself, may we bow in adoration. Amen. This morning we pray first for Worldwide Church. We pray for Debbie, Bishop of Southampton. We pray for the Lambeth Conference, a meeting of Anglican church leaders that's going to start shortly. We pray for evangelists in the Church of England, particularly those who were commissioned this week into the church army. We pray for the ministers here. Lord God, may your Holy Spirit help each of those who help us to know more of you, to live the path of discipleship, to witness to Christ's saving, saving power. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our response to worship as Christians. Heavenly Father, as we come to the summer, some of us will be going on holiday, our routines will be changed. Help us not to lose sight of our need to worship you. Help us to accept the encouragement of our brothers and sisters to set aside time to be holy in your presence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those of us who are in this congregation or watching online, those of us, those in our families and amongst our friends who have not yet accepted Christ as Saviour. We pray, Lord, that our example may help to show them the path to Christ. 
We pray earnestly, Lord, for those who are dear to us to turn to Christ and be saved. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the leaders of the nations. Ukraine, Russia, a new administration in Sri Lanka. And we pray that people of faith will come alongside each of them that they will speak your truth, that minds may be altered and your will done. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We are asked to pray for the natural world and its resources and our stewardship of them. We pray for our own government that it maintain its commitment to net zero target. We ask that you guide us in our use of the Earth's resources. That we don't do things in autopilot that we think before we switch on the air conditioning or drive the car around the corner to the shop. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for healing. As Jan said, numbers of us are not as well as we could be. We lift to you, Lord, all of those who are ill in mind, sp body or spirit. Give skill to surgeons, medics, to heal those who can be healed. And help us to receive your peace, that we may be healed in mind and spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in a few moments, Jam will bring us the colic for the day. And before that, a short time for us to pray for things that are deeply on our hearts. So we'll, let's commit these prayers and those ones that have yet to be said to our God in the words on page six. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So take that moment of silence for your own prayers this morning. A collect for the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We're going to sing again.
No? Just before that. Okay. I'll go away. Let's stand if we're able. And we're going to look round in a moment and exchange a, a wave of peace, if not a, a, a hand of peace. Christ is our peace. He's reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So, share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And now we are going to sing. It's a, a song that speaks of that firm trust that we have in Jesus as the, the cornerstone on which we build our lives. we turn to page seven in our service booklet and our prayer of thanksgiving that celebrates all that God has done for us, those wonderful truths that we base our lives on. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, to whom you've created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you, us, part of your holy people. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels 
and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit will honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. This morning, Jan and Peter are going to administer communion. That's the, the step here. We are offering you now the opportunity to receive not only bread, but wine. But we know that not everyone is happy about receiving the wine. So if you do not want to receive the wine, just go back to your, your seat straight away. And as we receive communion, do join the music group in, in singing a song that speaks about God's grace enabling us to be in his presence.
Turn to page 11. And before we say the, the prayer together there, a prayer for this week. God of our pilgrimage, you've led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. 
Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And some words of blessing, and then the final greeting over the page. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name, in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We heard words from Colossians and Jan reflected on that way that Christ is supreme in all creation and through all that he has done. And we celebrate that in the words of our final hymn, Name of All Majesty. And the last line of each verse says, Jesus is Lord, and let's make it as loudly as we can. So oh.